Hey guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Mumbles here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the universal camera in ZBrush. Make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell to get updated on our new videos. The universal camera in ZBrush is really one of the most welcome additions they've had in the last few years. Essentially, it allows you to have a physical, physically based camera which uses proper terminology like focal length and crop factor, uh, field of view, whatever you know from a normal camera, you can actually use this directly in ZBrush now. Why is this important? Well, a lot of times you need to match something up in ZBrush compared or in the same way as you have in software like Maya, for instance. You might have lineups of your cameras there, or you might have uh, you might have a shot which is locked down, and you don't need to make sure your character looks exactly the same. So that's at least the purpose when it comes to going back and forth between two software. But you also just have a big argument for knowing what focal length you you're viewing your camera your character at. We can find all the settings for the universal camera under draw to the top left. And we can dock it over. And here we have all the settings we need. So we have, um, we can just change, the quickest thing here is to just change, change the focal length right here. So first off, you gotta make sure your, your perspective is set to be enabled. And you also need to uh, have this enabled as well, the universal camera. This is gonna be enabled by default, but uh, if this is not enabled, it's not gonna work. So here you can see what the character looks like with an 80 millimeter or versus an 85 millimeter, which is getting closer to an orthographic view. It's massively problematic if you're sculpting like this, if you're sculpting at an 80 millimeter and uh, you bring this now into Blender or Maya and you want to light it there and the character is, or the shot is lit with, and the shot, and the shot is made with uh, a 50 millimeter. So now it's just going to look very different based on uh, these two shots. So it's really important that you figure out what you're going to be rendering the character at and uh, then try to sculpt with something similar. You can of course go between them as well to change it. What people used to do beforehand was often export out your mesh and bring it into uh, a regular 3D software and just change the focal length there or check the focal length just so that the character doesn't look crazy. You also got to make sure that when you're sculpting that you're not sculpting in an orthographic view because then the character is going to look insane. Like this is equivalent to, you know, like a 2000 millimeter lens or something. So there is no distortion whatsoever. Yeah, the face, especially faces change quite a lot. The, the longer your focal length, you can really, especially when you go between perspective and, and orthographic, so kind of like almost up to an 85 or even further, like, it, like it's a different kind of character. Yeah, like the head gets twice as big if we have an 18 millimeter versus like an 85 millimeter, like it's, or if we go between the perspective and orthographic. So those are the settings for um, focal length. We also have some settings down here as well. If you scroll down a little bit, I don't know why these settings are not in the same spot. But at least this is where you can store a camera and you can go between the different stored cameras. So if we want to have a camera angle which is like this, now we can hit store camera and we can call this uh, hero camera. We can make another one, uh, call it uh, back view. And now you can easily go between these two views by hitting the, the arrow key here. So this is, this is amazingly useful. The way we've been doing it before is through a hack, using the movie feature and adding a timeline to it and then storing views like this, which technically works, but this is, this is a lot easier because now you don't have to deal with an actual hack. Now we have a, now we have a real feature with cameras. The nice thing about the timeline feature, though, is that it supports uh, the arrow keys mm, true. left and right. So it's, it's really quick to switch between. For sure. So now you can see uh, we've got now going between the cameras. You can also just twick, check it here as well if you have a long list of cameras as well. You can also rename the camera as well. Hero camera 01. And you can delete the camera as well. So now that camera has been deleted. If you have a lot of cameras, so let's say we have a few of these here. We store camera. And you want to delete all of them. You have a long list here. You can enable the all button and then hit delete. And that's going to delete all the cameras. And like with most things in Seaverse when it comes to deleting, it is very much not undoable. So we also originally want to have a part here where we where we show you how to import and export cameras into into other software as well. Like we tested both Blender and Moto, but unfortunately it just doesn't work. And we believe this is due to the FBF FBX exporter in uh, or importer in the respective software. 
FBX is a black box and it's really hard for the developers to actually figure out how it works. But if you want a, a hint to how it's supposed to work, maybe you're watching this in the future and it does work <laughs> at that point. The way you do it is you go under C plugin, then you go to uh, FBF, FBX import export, then you go to options. And under here you have export cameras. And if you set this to only and import cameras only, that means it's only going to import or only export the cameras. Then we uh, just set uh, export, and now you can export out your file, put it wherever you want to, and you should, in theory, be able to load this into your other software. And you should also be able to export out your cameras from your other software, import it in. But at the current moment, it's pointless to show this feature because the cameras are not aligned in any way between most of the software we have tested out. So it does work if you have a software that natively supports FBX, like Maya, for example, yeah. as that's you know Autodesk's own format in their own software. So just a little heads up there that I, one of the biggest strengths of the Universal Camera is that you can import and export between them, which unfortunately is entirely broken in a lot of software. But yeah, that's Universal Camera. Incredibly easy to use. You find again just to sum it up, you find it under Draw, and then right here we have um, the Universal Camera. Change the focal length right here. You can undo the camera views as well here, which is some, the first time you can actually undo camera views. And then you have additional settings down here as well to store the camera, go between the cameras, rename the cameras, and delete the cameras. So yeah, we really hope you liked this video. Uh, let us know if you have any requests for other little ZBrush tips you might want to see us do a video about. We Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get up to date every single time we put out a new video. Yeah, it's probably pretty limited what we can do about cameras in ZBrush, but uh, you know, let's say something does get updated with the other software, Autodesk is nice, and they open up for the FBX format, then we would definitely be open for making a video about sort of like how to work with other software and ZBrush when it comes to cameras. If you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.